The President, please be seated. The President, the court is now in session. Reprenons l'audience. Now we will open the floor for the section of the appeal on the sentencing issue. Open the floor now to the reporter's judge. Sentencing. The trial chamber considered the appropriate sentence to be 35 years of imprisonment. The trial chamber then considered that a reduction in sentence of five years is appropriate given the violation of the accused rights occasioned by his illegal detention by the Cambodian military court between 10 May 1999 and 30 July 2007. The co-prosecutors argued that the trial chamber placed insufficient weight on the gravity of crimes and the accused leading role and willing participation in those crimes. The trial chamber placed undue weight on mitigating circumstances and the sentence imposed by the trial chamber is arbitrary and manifestly inadequate. The co-prosecutors request that the Supreme Court chamber revise the sentence imposed by the trial chamber through a sentence of life imprisonment order that this sentence be reduced to a term of 45 years to provide an appropriate remedy for the accused unlawful pre-ECCC detention. Order that a further reduction be made as appropriate for the very limited mitigating circumstances obtaining in the circumstances of this case with an absolute maximum reduction of up to five years and hold that the accused will serve the sentence without the possibility of a parole. The defense did not file a written response to the co-prosecutor's appeal brief. The defense argued that the trial chamber erred by failing to have due regard to Article 95 of the 2009 Criminal Court of Cambodia. The co-prosecutors respond that the defense arguments that are evidently unfounded or otherwise fail to meet minimum pleading requirements should be disregarded by the Supreme Court chamber. The co-prosecutors also contend that the defense second ground of appeal is not separate from the defense appeal on personal jurisdiction and should therefore be rejected for the same reasons as the letter. Thank you. Thank you. The floor is now open for the co-prosecutors to respond to the appeal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. May it please the court. The first issue that I will deal with in addressing the respect of sentencing is the matter that was raised by the Supreme Court Chamber in its scheduling order, where we were requested to explore whether and to what extent the 2009 Cambodian Criminal Code, including Article 668, applies to the determination of the appeals against sentence. That's in paragraph 4 of Your Honour's order. The underlying issue here in our submission is the 
application of Article 10 and Article 95 of the 2009 Penal Code, code penal of de this Court. De and just so I can reference all of us into the same place, Article 95 of article 95 the Cambodian Penal Code states that where a life sentence is reduced on the basis of mitigating circumstances, the sentence cannot be more than 30 years. Article 10 of the 2009 Penal Code provides that a new provision which prescribes a lighter penalty shall be applicable immediately. The second paragraph of Article 668, which I will call the prevalency clause, states that in the event of a conflict between other criminal legislation and criminal provisions and the provisions of this code, the provisions of Book 1 of this code shall prevail. Now we submit that in this particular court, Articles 95 and 668 are not applicable to this appeal, and I will explain to you why that is the position, and I may well call upon my learned colleague, obviously, who is an expert in Cambodian legislation. I'm not, um, so certainly in the question session, she may become involved in this process, too. But to be clear, Article 668, which I call the prevalency clause, clause, which is the clause that says that where other criminal legislation and criminal provisions in force shall be applicable to the offences defined and punished under such legislation and provisions, in the event of conflict between other criminal legislation and criminal provisions and the provisions of this code, the provisions of Book 1 of this code shall prevail. But the final sentence of Article 668 states that the provision of Paragraph 2, the Prevalency Clause, shall not be applicable to special criminal legislation. The term special criminal legislation refers to this Ici, nous sommes bien dans ce cas d'espèce. Thus, the drafters of the 2009 Penal Code demonstrated that Article 95 was not to apply to these proceedings. Indeed, one could add that if the drafters si les of the ECCC law had wanted the 2009 Penal Code to apply to sentencing here, they would have actually amended the law. Parliament would have amended the law. Parliament didn't do that. What Parliament did was to say that that provision did not apply to this court. So, the argument that we are making Donc, que nous is that, article, that est que in essence, Article 95 of the 2009 Penal Code is not code incorporated de into the sentencing regime of this court. Dans le régime régissant les I would add, CCTC. and this will be later in my submissions, that in any event, Article 95 is actually irrelevant for your honour's consideration because our position now is that any mitigating circumstances that exist in this case have frankly reached a vanishing point. And so the provisions of Article 95 in any event would not apply, but I will make those submissions later. We also take the position that Article 95 does not apply to the ECCC because the agreement and the law and the regulations set out a sui generis institution and indeed even Judge Laverne who dissented on sentencing and stated in his view wrongly in my respectful submission that Article 95 applied, determined that this court was sui generis. He stated that in his dissenting opinion. The ECCC agreement and the law are the reflection of extensive negotiations between the government of this country and the United Nations. The agreement and the law set out 
a sui generis system donc, for sentencing of the accused in this court. If you look at paragraph 574 of the judgment in this case, you will see that it states that the agreement creates a sui generis sentencing regime. It is therefore doubtful whether on the basis of Article 33 new, the Chamber could follow a subsequent national legislative provision in preference to the provisions of the agreement. Such an interpretation could mean that the future acts of the national legislature concerning sentence might frustrate the agreement. That's a paragraph 574 of the judgment, reinforcing the view of the sentencing regime here is sui generis. The trial chamber further found that the international nature of the crimes which the, for which the accused had been convicted and the uncertainties and complexities evident in the evolution of Cambodian criminal law from the 1956 Penal Code onwards ruled out direct applications of Cambodian sentencing provisions. The drafters of the agreement on the one hand and the law on the other made a deliberate decision to depart from ordinary Cambodian penal law on sentencing. They wanted to create a specific regime for this court. Examples of that can be found, for example, in the agreement at Article 10, departing from Cambodian penal law in force stating that the maximum penalty at the ECCC is life imprisonment. The maximum penalty, as you know, under the 56 Penal Code was not life imprisonment. Also, the ECCC law, Article 3, 3, clarifying that at the ECCC, the sentencing regime for national crimes is stipulated in Articles 30 38 and 39 of the law, and this again reflects a deliberate departure from the sentencing regime of the 1956 Penal Code. The absence of reference to national sentencing practices sets the ECCC law and agreement apart from the statutes of other international tribunals which directs their chambers to look at national sentencing practices for guidance, specifically because they were exclusively and purely international courts. If you look, for example, at the Yugoslav War Crimes Statute, Article 24.1, the penalty imposed by the trial chamber, and now I'm reading from the statute of the Yugoslav War Crimes Tribunal, the penalty imposed by the trial chamber shall be limited to imprisonment. In determining the terms of imprisonment, the trial chamber shall have recourse to the general practice regarding prison sentences in the courts of the former Yugoslavia. The same reference exists in the Rwanda Tribunal, having re reference to the courts of Rwanda in deciding and determining sentence within the international courts. The omission, Your Honours, of a similar provision in the ECCC law and the agreement further underscores the intention of the UN and the royal government was to set up a sui generis system. Moreover, if you look at the rules, the regulations of this court, made by the judges, it confirms the unique nature of the sentencing regime here. If you look at Internal Rule 98, it states, if the accused is found guilty, the chamber shall sentence him or her in accordance with the agreement, the ECCC law, and these internal rules. Applying the framework set out si in the agreement, the ECCC law and the internal rules, CETC it's clear that a chamber is empowered to impose a sentence of anywhere between life, imprisonment, and five years, regardless of its assessment of the arguments pertaining to mitigation. In other words, nothing in the ECC's 
COI generous framework requires the chamber to reduce life imprisonment sentence to 30 years if it finds that there are mitigating factors to justify a reduction in sentence. The principle of Lex Meteor has also been raised as a matter of interest for this chamber. Our position is that that particular principle does not require the application of Article 95 of the 2009 Penal Code for the determination of sentences in this court, and this is for the following reasons. The principle le of lex meteor is understood to mean that if the law relevant to the accused has been amended, si le droit, uh, accusé est the less modifié, severe law should be la applied. Loi la moins qui doit now, Article 15, 15 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political, and political Rights states in relevant part that if, subsequent to the commission si of the offences, provision is made by law for the imposition of the lighter penalty, the offender shall benefit thereby. That principle does not apply here, and for a very good reason. And that is because, as I've just stated, those relevant provisions of the 2009 Penal Code do not apply to this court. Those principles relevant to sentencing do not apply here. This court is not bound by them, and so the respondent cannot enjoy the benefits of lex meteor. And there is authority for this. The Yugoslav war Le crimes tribunal addressed this principle in the Dragan Nikolic case. Dans Dragan the appeals Nicolich chamber found that the accused person can only benefit from the more lenient sentence if the law that has changed si la loi is binding, changé, since they only have a protected uh, legal position when the sentencing range must be applied to them. The appeals chamber further cautioned in that case that allowing the principle of lex meteor to be applied to the sentences of the international tribunal on the basis of changes in the laws of the domestic system in Yugoslavia would mean that the states of the former Yugoslavia would have the power to undermine the discretion of the international tribunal. The chamber found that that outcome would be unacceptable and that it would undermine the primacy of the tribunal's mandate. It is my submission for the same reasons. When this court was established, the agreement, the law, and the regulations provided the sentencing regime for this court. The 2009 provisions on sentencing are not binding on this court, and the accused thus cannot enjoy the more lenient provisions of that code. The 2009 provisions on the international criminal courts have rejected the applicability of the Rome Statute, which is the governing statute of the international criminal courts and contains a similar provision on sentencing to Article 95, imposing a fixed term of imprisonment for no longer than 30 years, and the ICTR, the Rwanda Tribunal, ruled in the case of Nahimana, N-A-H-I-M, a and A, that that particular que, rule uh, does not bind the Rwanda tribunal. So tribunal our submission Rwanda. is, Nous in this particular instance, donc, uh, en that this law does not apply to this court. That's made clear in Rule 668 because this is special criminal legislation and my learned friend, Madam Chi Liang, can confirm that. But this is a sui generis court with its own provisions on sentencing and that the accused, that the respondent cannot enjoy the benefits of the 2009 Penal Code.
Mr. President, will we be finishing at 12 o'clock today? Monsieur le Président, for lunch, will we be finishing for lunch at midday? Pour le déjeuner? I will uh, try and finish before the lunch break. Bien, cas, um, I now intend to briefly summarize our un bref submissions on de nos sentencing. Concernant la peine. We say that the trial chamber discernibly erred in the exercise of its sentencing discretion in arriving at a manifestly inadequate sentence. And we say that the trial chamber made a number of errors in this respect. And I will go through those errors. Um, there are six of them uh, seriatim. The first error is that the trial chamber, in finding that there were significant mitigating factors that existed that justified a reduction in sentence erred in its determination. They made a mistake. We say that the trial chamber, in fact, misinterpreted its own findings. And I think if you read the paragraphs concerned, that's paragraph 606 to 611, it will be very clear that they misinterpreted their own findings. They found that there were significant mitigating factors in the conclusion that they made. And yet they rejected or qualified each one of the mitigating factors that they considered, save one. Let's look at the first mitigating factor, superior orders and duress. On the facts, the trial chamber rejected superior orders and duress as mitigating factors. And you can see that in paragraphs 607 and 608 of the trial, of the trial judgment. The trial chamber found that the accused knew that the orders he received to kill, torture, and arbitrarily detain persons protected under the Geneva Conventions were unlawful, and that's paragraph 552 of the trial judgment. The trial chamber also found that the accused willingly and actively participated in the implementation of a policy of terror, and his conduct in carrying out his functions at S21 evidenced a high degree of efficiency and zeal. And that you will find at paragraphs 555 and 557. It should further be noted that the accused's personal belief in the party and his commitments to its goals apparently subsisted even after he left S21 on the 7th of January of 1979. That's a paragraph 556. It is granted by us that the trial chamber did report giving limited weight to the coercive climate in democratic Campuchia and the accused position within the CPK. However, however the co-prosecutors submit that the weight given to this factor by the trial chamber can only have been minor in light of the related findings in respect of superior authority and duress. For example, if you look at paragraphs 557 to 558 and paragraph 608, rejecting duress as defense since the accused was a willing and active participant in the implementation of the policy of terror. Remorse. The next mitigating factor. The trial chamber noted that the respondent had made repeated public apologies but found that the mitigating impact of his remorse was undermined by his failure to offer full and unequivocal admissions of responsibility and his request for an acquittal at the end of the proceedings. Paragraph de l'audience de jugement, paragraphe 610. The next mitigating factor, the propensity for rehabilitation. The trial chamber noted that international courts have counseled against giving rehabilitation undue weight and mitigation. 
d'autres and ultimately accorded what is called limited consideration to this factor in its determination of sentence. Dans la détermination de la peine. Et qu'il avait fait une compte dans une certaine mesure de cette capacité de l'accusé d'être inséré pour la peine applicable, par la 611. Cinquième facteur atténuant, la coopération de l'accusé. Ce facteur se distingue par rapport aux autres. C'est le seul that the trial chamber seemed to adopt without any major reservation. And you can find that at paragraph 609 of the trial judgment. However, the trial judgment seems to have adopted the judgment. However, the trial judgment seems to have adopted the judgment. However, the trial judgment seems to have adopted the judgment. However, the trial judgment seems to have adopted the judgment. However, the trial judgment seems to have adopted the judgment. However, the trial judgment seems to have adopted the judgment. However, the trial judgment seems to have adopted the judgment. However, the trial judgment seems to have adopted the judgment. However, the trial judgment seems to have adopted the judgment. However, the trial judgment seems to have adopted the judgment. However, the trial judgment seems to have adopted the judgment. However, the trial judgment seems to have adopted the judgment. However, the trial judgment seems to have adopted the judgment. However, the trial judgment seems to have adopted the judgment. However, the trial judgment seems to have adopted the judgment. However, the trial judgment seems to have adopted by the accused, and his challenge to the jurisdiction of this court indicates that his cooperation was not given in a voluntary or selfless capacity. International jurisprudence establishes very firmly what must be fulfilled for a successful plea in mitigation based on cooperation with the authorities. One of these is the selflessness of the accused cooperation, which must be lent without asking for anything in return. My authority for that is the case of Blaschkic, Yugoslav, War Crimes Tribunal case, B-L-A-S-K-I-C, paragraph 774 of that judgment. As I've said, the further elaboration of the accused position on appeal confirms the very limited or non-existent nature of the mitigating circumstances in this case. In respect of remorse, the accused continued request for release underscores in a case like this, involving massive criminality, the fact that the accused to this day lacks real, sincere remorse for what happened. Similarly, the accused's assertion that he does not constitute one of those most responsible for serious crimes that occurred during the DK period is inconsistent with the notion that he admits responsibility for the grave crimes for which he is charged. He even goes so far in his own appeal to assert that he was one of the least responsible for the crimes committed during this period. And you'll find that in paragraph 55 of his appellate brief. The accused's belated challenge to the legal basis for his prosecution and his request for release highlights, in my submission, the insincere, selective, and opportunistic nature of his cooperation with this court. The next error is that the trial chamber erred by giving insufficient weight to the gravity of the respondent's crimes. International criminal courts have repeatedly emphasized that the gravity of the offense is the primary concern in sentencing for international crimes. There are a number of cases on this, but in the time I will only quote two. The case of Muhimana, that's M-U-H-I-M-A-N-A, appeals judgment of the Rwanda Tribunal at paragraph 233. The gravity of the offences committed is the primary consideration when imposing a sentence. The prosecutor in Carrera, K-A-R-E-R-A, trial judgment, paragraph 583, the penalty must first and foremost be commensurate with the gravity of the offence. It is our submission that the trial chamber failed to take account of the fundamental principle when determining mitigating factors warranted the imposition of a finite rather than a life term of imprisonment. De réclusion euh, durée déterminée plutôt que perpétuelle. It is our submission that the gravity of the respondents' mm. crimes can be seen in their magnitude, their scope, and their duration. La portée et sa durée.
The trial chamber found that the la respondent was found guilty for multiple crimes against humanity committed over a period of more than three years, sur une de which resulted de ans, in the killing of over 12,000 people, many of whom were tortured before they died or were executed. Été avant de mourir ou executed. The scope of this policy, a policy of terror, Une, uh, the accused was instrumental in creating had a broad geographical scope extending throughout the country of Cambodia. If you look tout, at the trial transcript, pays, you will find si at pages 69 to 71, 69 à 71 where the expert witness Craig Etchison stated that S21 was the only security office that was authorized to detain, torture, and execute individuals from everywhere in Cambodia. The third error. The trial chamber further erred by giving insufficient weight to aggravating circumstances. The aggravating circumstances in this case included Les the accused's superior position and abuse of power, le, de pouvoir the cruelty et, uh, la, of the crimes committed, the defenselessness of the victims, and lastly, the discriminatory intent with which the crimes were committed. I've already mentioned that issue. Comme, and you'll find that at paragraph 602 to 605 of the trial judgment. As the co-prosecutors stated earlier le in their submissions on crimes against humanity, the trial chamber erred by subsuming the various crimes against humanity under the crime of persecution and not directly considering discriminatory intent euh, in respect of all of the other convictions which we say the trial chamber euh, should have made with respect to crimes against humanity, thus considering additional aggravating circumstances in respect donc, of those particular crimes. Les pour if ces the trial crimes, chamber si had given proper weight to these aggravating circumstances, the only reasonable conclusion, Your Honours, would have been the imposition of a life sentence. The fourth error is that even if very limited mitigating factors did exist in this case, and we say those factors reach a vanishing point, frankly, now, the trial chamber erred by finding that they justified a reduction in the sentence from life imprisonment. International uh, law establishes very clearly le, that a court need not reduce a sentence on the basis of mitigating circumstances, where the gravity of the crime is especially severe crime, or where the effect of mitigation is limited or offset ou by aggravating que, circumstances. Uh, les circumstances atténuantes, uh, sont In the circumstances aggravantes. Kayalili case, exemple, and I'll spell that, K-A-J-E-L-I-J-E-L-I, appeals judgment. Le jugement en appel. This case found that the trial chamber did not uh, did not la, make a mistake a, in declining to reduce a life imprisonment sentence on the basis of credible mitigating evidence, where that mitigating sur, evidence did not clearly outweigh the gravity of the crimes for which the appellant had been charged and convicted. Another case from the Rwanda Tribunal is the Mietegika case, I'll spell that, N-I-Y-I-T, E G E K A, paragraph 267, 267 of the appeals judgment upholding the imposition of a life sentence and stating that nothing prevents a trial chamber from imposing a life sentence in light of the gravity of crimes committed, even if the evidence in the case reveals the existence of mitigating circumstances. Another decision also from the Rwanda Tribunal, Musima, M-U-S-E-M-A, the appeals Musima. judgment at paragraph 396, stated that even if a trial chamber finds that mitigating si circumstances exist, it is not precluded from imposing a life, imposing a sentence of life imprisonment where the gravity of the offence requires the imposition of the maximum sentence provided for. 
International courts have imposed this maximum penalty in cases of grave crimes, even where the accused the has cooperated with the court. For example, in the case that I just mentioned, exemple, the Moussina case, citer, Moussema, the trial chamber found that the accused had cooperated throughout the proceedings through admission of facts, including procedure, the fact that genocide had occurred in the region at issue, and that these admissions région, had facilitated the expediency of the trial, but he was still sentenced to life imprisonment because of the nature of the crimes he had committed. In this case, Your Honours, despite the accused cooperation and the existence of other mitigating circumstances, the trial chamber found that the aggravating circumstances outweighed the mitigating circumstances and consequently imposed a life sentence. Here I'm talking about Moussima. And the appeals chamber upheld peine, this finding. Maximale. Et la chambre euh, the fifth error is that the trial chamber made a mistake. It erred by not considering international decision. sentencing jurisprudence. Now, I've heard the submissions from my learned friends across the world. Euh, they say that international law doesn't dit, apply when it's not very helpful to them, but when it, when it is helpful to them, that international law does apply. For example, they said that Rule 11, they quoted Rule 11 of the Yugoslav War Crimes Tribunal Statute statut du tribunal to assist their argument, but where it's unhelpful, they say it doesn't apply. Pour eux, well, the fact is, for these kinds of crimes, this court, in my respectful submission, is obliged to look to international jurisprudence because it is where the guidance lies. These courts have been considering these offences for 15 years. And in those 15 years, a great deal of jurisprudence has developed which should Un be relied de on in determining matters in this court, uh, regardless of the fact that this is the Cambodian domestic court with special international features. Uh, we made extensive submissions on the international jurisprudence related to sentencing in our final trial submission. The trial chamber, at least on the face of their judgment, appeared not to consider those arguments. They appeared not to consider any of the cases that we submitted to the court that should be considered in coming to a determination of sentence. The trial chamber would not have imposed the manifestly inadequate sentence of 35 years in this case if they reviewed the sentencing practices of other international tribunals. Indeed, the accused crimes and his level of responsibility clearly placed his case, this case, in the category of cases bon, where international courts would have imposed a term of life tribunals imprisonment. To highlight this particular fact, we have reviewed cela, all of the cases nous avons where a sentence of life imprisonment was imposed. We selected from all of those cases, Dans seven cases, affaires, sept, two from the Yugoslav War Crimes Tribunal, tribunal and five, and five et from et the Rwanda tribunal. tribunal. And you can see in front of you a chart. If I could show this, please, Mr. President, this is a chart which tableau. essentially is a graphical representation of what I'm about to say. De, des arguments que je suis sur le point de vous the President, please Président. go ahead. Oui, I'm obliged, Mr. President. Thank you. Monsieur Kelly, uh, je vous remercie. We selected these seven cases Nous avons ces sept by taking cases where the accused uh, had similar responsibilities to the affaires respondent in this case, avait des and where the number of individuals de killed for which the accused was held responsible was ascertainable. Well, on in many cases, as you know, that I've heard exemple, be before savez, international courts, cas, it's sometimes very hard to actually determine uh, de how many people were killed. So we selected those cases where the courts had found a certain number of individuals killed. We found too frequently, especially at the Rwanda tribunal, that individuals were found guilty of genocide or murder of many or a number of individuals. Now, this is perfectly understandable in Rwanda, given the background of the killings, with many taking place at roadblocks through generalized raids on homes and places of refuge where the population were constantly shifting and migrating, and also given the relatively short 
short period over which the genocide in Rwanda took place, a little over three months, as opposed to the three years in this case. The ICTR, the Rwanda Tribunal, did not frequently attribute exact numbers killed to, the, to these individuals, and thus the co-prosecutors did not include those cases in our sample because we believe that that would have been unfair to the respondent and would have essentially presented an inaccurate picture to your honours. I will very briefly go through um, each one of these cases. You can see at the far left-hand corner is the respondent in this case. On the left-hand side, it shows the number of dead in this case, 12,500. And next to that, it shows the duration of the crimes, three and a half years. And now, if I go through very briefly the case next to Galic, Galic is a case from the Yugoslav War Crimes Tribunal. He was sentenced to 20 years at trial and life on appeal. He was a military commander and he was convicted of crimes against humanity, being murder, inhumane acts and war crimes being infliction of terror upon the civilians, that was the war crimes he was convicted of. He was responsible for hundreds killed, thousands wounded, and for the, for the terrorizing the 300,000 residents of Sarajevo. He gave commands to initiate widespread sniper and shelling attacks on Sarajevo. He was responsible for the imprisonment of hundreds of civilians in inhumane conditions. And the duration of his criminal conduct was 23 months. If we now look to the next ICTY case that was selected where there was a life imprisonment trial, there was an appeal pending in this case, so the determination of sentence in this case is not, is not final, but at least at trial he was sentenced to life imprisonment. This man was a fairly minor figure. He was a leader of a group of Bosnian Serb paramilitaries. He was convicted of crimes against humanity, persecutions, murder, inhumane acts, and extermination, and war crimes of murder and cruel treatment. He was responsible for the murder of at least 132 de la mort Bosnian, au moins Muslim 132 men, women and children, euh, musulmans bosniaques and also for the et femmes et aussi pour des abus, euh, des CBS plutôt euh, commis the en détenus. La période visée the est d'un mois over a 26 -month period. et euh, euh, le fait d'avoir. If we now move on to the next case, which is Akiesen, uh, this is a case from ICTR, I'll spell it A-K-A-Y-E-S-U. -E this individual received a life sentence at trial, which was confirmed on appeal. He was a mayor of the Tarba commune. He was convicted of genocide and direct and public incitement to commit genocide and crimes against humanity of extermination, murder, torture, rape and inhumane acts. He personally was responsible for the death of approximately 2,000 individuals whilst he was mayor and individually criminally responsible et, for the murder of approximately 16 civilians killed on his orders and in his presence. Le, le, le he participated in and encouraged the rape of women, et et and the duration of his criminal conduct was approximately three months. Son comportement criminel était à peu près trois mois. The next case, the fourth case, is the Carrera case, also a Rwanda tribunal case. Aussi une affaire dont était this is an individual that was sentenced both at trial and confirmed on appeal to life imprisonment. De réclusion perpétuité en première instance, confirmé en appel. His position was that of a prefect il avait, within il était a commune in Rwanda. De préfet he was convicted of genocide 
Rwandaise. Il a été reconnu coupable de génocide, de crime de l'humanité, crime contre l'humanité, d'homicide et d'extermination. Et il a été responsable pour participation à une attaque à une citation à une attaque sur une église où une centaine de réfugiés tutsi ont été tués. La période visée est de deux mois. Clement Kayashima. Clement Kayashima. There are four bars for him in this representation before you simply because he received on trial and appeal four concurrent sentences of life imprisonment respective to his four separate convictions for genocide. He also was a prefect. Il était aussi un préfet. Il a été reconnu coupable de quatre chefs d'accusation. Il a été reconnu coupable de quatre chefs d'accusation. Il a été reconnu coupable d'avoir contribué à quatre massacres. Et vous voyez les chiffres. Le premier massacre, 8000 personnes ont été tuées. Le second, 4000. Certaines estimations étaient plus élevées, mais nous avons choisi le plus élevé. Le second massacre, 4000 à 5000. Le troisième, 4 000 à 5 000, et le quatrième, le quatrième massacre des milliers de personnes. La durée de ce massacre criminel est la suivante. Le premier massacre a duré à peu près trois jours. Le quatrième, où des milliers de personnes ont été tuées, était une campagne qui a duré trois mois. Le prochain cas est... The Alras Tabaguzi case, also an ICTR case. He was sentenced at trial to life in prison. To be fair, to your honours, the appeal is still pending in that case, so there is no final determination. He was the commander of a parent. Il était commandant d'un euh, bataillon paracommando. Il a été reconnu coupable de génocide, de crime contre l'humanité, d'homicide, de persécution et autres actes inhumains. Il était responsable de la mort de 2000 personnes et la période visée est d'à peu près un mois. In the last case, which is the Renzaho case, R E N Z A H O, which is another Rwanda tribunal case, devant le tribunal, this individual has been sentenced at trial to life imprisonment again. He has appealed before the appeals chamber. He is still pending. He was a prefect in Rwanda, and he was convicted of genocide, crimes against humanity, murder. Contre l'humanité, d'homicide, de viol, en tant que crime contre l'humanité, de crime de guerre, d'homicide, de viol. Il était responsable de la mort de 140 personnes à trois reprises, au moins, auxquelles il a participé au début et à la fin. Enfin, il était présent, en fait, au début et à la fin de ces exécutions. Il était aussi responsable du viol de plusieurs femmes. Il savait que les viols étaient his prefectural district, and he made remarks encouraging sexual abuse. And that criminal conduct was over a period of approximately three months. If, with your permission, Mr. President, I could show two other graphics, which essentially are the same as these, but I think make the picture of what I've just painted a lot clearer. Exprime plus clairement mon exposé. Le Président, vous pouvez aller à l'arrière, mais s'il vous plaît, soyez bref. Oui, mais soyez bref. Oui, Mr. Président. Ce particulier graphique, vous voyez, représente très clairement le nombre de morts en comparaison à tous ces autres cas. Vous voyez ici que les répondants, le nombre de morts, le nombre de morts pour lesquels cet individu is responsible far out sea, exceeds any of these other cases that I've quoted. And lastly, if I can show the other diagram, the duration of this man's conduct exceeds by far any of these other cases. The sixth error is that the trial chamber erred in failing to recognize that the sentence of 35 years does not meet the two principal goals of international sentencing, namely retribution and deterrence. 
And when I speak of retribution, Your Honours, I'm not speaking of re dissuasion revenge. Dissuasion et I'm speaking de vengeance, about the expectations de, de, de of the Cambodian people des in respect of this court. Du peuple cambodgien International vis -vis sentencing tribunal, practices must ensure that convicted perpetrators que see les their crimes, crimes punished, that victims' interests are vindicated, and that others who may be tempted to commit atrocities are for justice victimes dissuaded. Et pour dissuader toute autre personne de commettre des crimes à l'avenir. Les tribunaux internationaux ont constaté que leur sentencing practices must be directed first and foremost at retribution and deterrence. Que leur pratique de détermination de peine doit respecter ces deux objectifs. Le raisonnement que ces objectifs, et je cite, que les auteurs de crimes reconnus coupables soient punis pour leurs crimes et pour dissuader à tout jamais d'autres personnes de commettre de tels crimes et pour montrer à la communauté, montrer que la communauté internationale ne tolérera pas de sérieuses violations du droit international et du droit humanitaire. Vous verrez au paragraphe 996 de la décision Moussema. Noted that undue weight must not be given to other sentencing purposes, such as rehabilitation. Trop d'importance à des d'autres pratiques de détermination de peine, comme par exemple la réinsertion, possibilité de réinsertion sociale de l'accusé. 35 ans est manifestement inadéquat euh, quand on considère la portée, l'échelle et la durée des crimes de cette personne. Finalement, comme je l'ai dit au début. Should impose a term of life imprisonment. That is, of course, reduced to take account for the period of the legal detention by the Cambodian military court. But we call for the imposition of a life term. But we call for the imposition of a life term. But we call for the imposition of a life term. But we call for the imposition of a life term. But we call for the imposition of a life term. But we call for the imposition of a life term. Imposed in this case, for all of the reasons that I've stated, it is perfectly proper in international jurisprudence to reduce a life term to a finite term. Of years. Thank you very much. 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 In the Kaelili decision, that's K A J E L I J E L I, a life term of imprisonment was reduced to 45 years to account for the violation of the accused's rights during his detention. Les droits de l'accusé pendant sa détention. That is at paragraph 324 of that judgment. In the Braguesa case, the trial chamber held paragraphs 1106 and 1107. In the appeals judgment 1097, that a life term could be reduced to 35 years to account for improper detention. The sentence was in fact further reduced on appeal to 32 years. Although an unspecified part of the further reduction was attributed to certain convictions being set aside on appeal. Attribuer une partie de cette réduction au fait que certaines des and I would also note, Your Honours, that the detention violations in those two cases that I have mentioned to you were much less severe. Les affaires que je vous ai présentées, in this case, in Baragwazu, it was 38 days, and in the Kailila case, it was 211 days. The OCP expressly recognised this fact in our closing submissions at trial. However, on the other hand, these are cases where the international body itself, the court that was determining the sentence, had been responsible. For these violations, whereas in this instance, it's a separate court. Because the Cambodian military court is responsible for the detention and not the Cambodian institution. The Cambodian institution is responsible for the detention and not the Cambodian institution. The Cambodian institution is responsible for the detention and not the Cambodian institution. The Cambodian institution is responsible for the detention and not the Cambodian institution. The Cambodian institution is responsible for the detention and not the Cambodian institution. The Cambodian institution is responsible for the detention and not the Cambodian institution. The Cambodian institution is responsible for the detention and not the Cambodian institution. The Cambodian institution is responsible for the detention and not the Cambodian institution. The Cambodian institution is responsible for the detention and not the Cambodian institution. The Cambodian institution is responsible for the detention and not the Cambodian institution. The Cambodian institution is responsible for the detention and not the Cambodian institution. The Cambodian institution is responsible for the detention and not the Cambodian institution. The Cambodian institution is responsible for the detention and not the Cambodian institution. The Cambodian institution is responsible for the detention and not Mr. President, you opened them on behalf of the United Nations and the Cambodian people. And those particular comments touched me. I'm from the United Nations. I'm one of the officials working here together with my Cambodian colleagues. But you also opened these proceedings on behalf of the Cambodian people. 
And it is for the Cambodian people, but ultimately, we must answer their need for justice, their need for retribution, their need for reconciliation. In essence, it's not the co-prosecutors that are pleading from the bar. It is the Cambodian people. And it is for them, Your Honours, that you must, in this case, Based on the trial chamber's finding on the gravity of the crimes for which this man is responsible and the related aggravating factors, in particular his superior position and his discriminatory intent, we submit that you must impose in this case a life term reduced to no less than 45 years. That is the appropriate penalty in this case. I thank you. Mr. President, Je and your honours, for listening to my submissions, I am now complete, and I think we are now coming terminé. to the lunch break. Je crois que de la pause. The President. Le président. The court uh, is now adjourned uh, for lunch break uh, and will be resumed uh, at 1.30. Uh, security personnel are now directed to take uh, the accused uh, to the detention facility au and bring him back by 1.30.